Hey everybody, welcome back to Mountain Crawlers. Today we have an updated walk around to do of Quince's 1992 Jeep Cherokee XJ. We've done quite a lot of mods since you guys saw it last in a walk around. So let's show you what we've done. And here's the owner Quince. As most of you know, if you follow the channel, he is in most of the videos. And uh, yeah, we've done a ton to this. What's your favorite mod been so far? The gears for sure by a long shot yeah we've done 513 gears he's upgraded to 35s this thing crawls pretty awesome now. going from 307 gears to the 513 is just nightmare for sure let's start with the front end so like we said 513 gears spartan locker dana 30 high pinion Artec, what else artec truss artec lower control arm skids artec outer gussets iron rock inner gussets so it's Knuckles are gusted on both sides. Stinky fab racing, uh, aluminum one ton steering with their aluminum over the axle track bar. Uh, almost alloy. Almost alloy, iron rock almost alloy kits with uh, the Spicer 760XU joints. And the shafts are out of Ben's 96. Out of our parts seat at the shop. Yeah. Yeah. So you get the bigger axle shafts. Drop a link in the description for you guys on how to do that almost alloy and it kind of showcases this axle build. Uh, it was a pretty fun build and it's been working great so far. So what else is in the front end? We went over the front axle and all those new upgrades, but let's, for people that haven't seen the channel, what has been done to this prior to that? It was start off on stock 92 Cherokee. It has Amazon DIY bumper, uh, Badlands Apex 12,000 pound winch. Big Lion 7 inch round amber lights and just a slew of Badlands' D ring shackles and stuff. Bilstein shock absorbers and did we say core 4x4 four four arms? Uh, they're core adjustable short arms. Hopefully, that's the next mod we'll be getting rid of the short arms and go long arm because mm -hmm. it rides like a tank. <laughs> um, the lift kit's a four and a half inch core lift kit with, and I screwed up in the last video kind of explaining this because there was some confusion on it. It's a four and a half inch core lift off of Ben's old Jeep and a zone it, lift. Zone lift. Yeah. Yeah. The core was the control arms. Zone lift, but I have a three quarter inch spacer, Rubicon Express spacer in the front to raise the front up. The back is uh, stinky fab racing shackle relocation uh, brackets, as well as a core eight inch adjustable shackle. So to raise the back up to match the front. Mm. So it sits just under five inches left. Of course, if you guys saw in an earlier video, Quince did some notch custom flares on this thing. Turned out pretty sweet. Was a pain in the ass to do, though. Putting it nicely. Yep. It, it turns out awesome, but just be forewarned, there is a ton of work that's going to go into them if you want them to look decent. Exactly, yeah. The front you can have done in probably two hours, honestly. The front's not a big deal. The back, it took, what, two months worth of weekends? Yeah. The problem with the back is that it's one time if you mess up you're screwed yeah so you're, you're pretty much if you screw it up yeah. you're stuck with it the front you can replace fenders so it's not the end of the world but the back you're kind of stuck with that unless you want to do a lot of body work yeah because if you come back here it actually they cut out an extremely substantial amount of the body so they it cuts all the way back to this door it cuts a ton of the body out and you have to weld the halves together they claim don't weld it all the way around just tack it and body fill it. That seemed cheap to me. So I ended up just welding it in pieces over a period of time just so it didn't warp. Yeah, and for sure. The whole entire body back together. And make sure it doesn't come apart in the future. Yeah. Yep. So tell us about the roof rack. The roof rack, I think in the last video I mentioned it, it was off a 73 Chevy, a sliding camper. It has been sectioned about 36 inches out of it to match this with JCR gutter rail mounts, drip rail mounts. Let's talk about that the sliders and the door armor. Door armor is I had bought in dirt bounds and kind of screwed up the cut, so didn't want to spend the money on that again. So I got the Amazon door armor. Honestly, sorry, dirt bound, the Amazon stuff fit way better. It just matched the body way better. So everything is just all these are rib nutted in the 3H rib nuts, two by six. Uh, Brain fart. Square tubing. Rectangle tubing for the rock slider. Two by six, 180 wall? Yeah. Yep. 
got welded in the body. And then just a slew of Raptor liner just to kind of blend everything in. Prince's so. latest mod has been this Iron Man 4x4 awning. Yeah. How do you like it? I, we did it at a parade, me and Ben really like it. It not, mounted up good. It seems to be pretty sturdy when you take it out. Is there a Delta Wing, the 270? It's got the, the it's got the walls too. Yeah, it has walls and window and everything. It's the XT71, the 270 degrees, so it wraps all the way around the back. Mm -hmm. So it provides a lot of shade, it's really nice. It definitely is a nice shade, but do you worry about ripping it off when we're wheeling? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how I feel about having the bag on there. I just never really much cared for the bags on the side, like overlanders, but... You always leave it on for an overlanding trip, like if we're more mellow, doing an easy trip, but when we're rock crawling, he's probably going to take it off. So. Yeah, just, it's a series of bolts, because I can pop them off real fast and just leave it off to yeah. protect it. It's kind of like what I do with my tent. I take it off if I'm doing some serious stuff, and then it's on when we're overlanding, so it's kind of a best of both worlds. I call my Jeep, and Quince probably does too, calls it the Rocklander. Half the time it's rock land, or rock crawling, and the other half it's camping and overlanding. So. Yeah, slash daily drive. It's a multi-use rig for sure. Yeah, and daily drive too. So we got to keep them up and keep them well-maintained. Let's talk about this rear axle. We swapped this 44 in a few months ago. Goodbye 35 and did a XJ44 in there. Ben regeared it. It's got an iron rock. XJ44 truss, uh, 513 gear, Spartan locker, solid diff covers. So, try to make it a little more reliable. All new brake hardware and brakes. That was a feed in and of itself. Yep. Trust us, don't bother doing disc brakes because it's a pain to try to find the parts for them. Or drum brakes. Drum brakes, I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, yeah. we need a disc brake swap this thing the next time we do brakes. Yeah, because part of the pieces came from the East Coast, part of the West Coast. I mean, it was a slew. It was a trip trying to cross-reference everything mm -hmm. everything for them this beautiful rear bumper inspired by ben <laughs> it's a literally a duplicate of his i will leave a link in the description of when we put this tire carrier together it's definitely based off of mine but it's a great setup i don't care if people copy it and it works good i love it and what really sold me is when ben did these because i've seen him you can watch larry's in the, most of the videos just bounce rocks off this and <laughs> There it goes! Oh boy! And then the swing out works well. Hatch opens good. Uh, rust uh, DIY tire carrier kit. Full size 35 inch spare. Ben actually found these tires on Marketplace. A guy about 45 minutes from us was selling them. They only have 1,500 miles on dirt cheap, and that's sort of what fast-tracked all this build. Mm -hmm. So, By the way, the base of the bumper is the Amazon DIY bumper, a.k.a. the JCR DIY bumper. We just were a little cheaper with Amazon. Basically the same exact bumper, though. And then all this addition, the tire carrier and the quarter panel armor there is everything that we designed ourselves. So it's nice to have a bumper that you can kind of use as a base and build off from there. It saves a lot of time. Yeah, Ben sort of pioneered the design of what we did mine. We literally just backed it up and just started mm -hmm. taking measurements and angles and duplicating it. Mm -hmm. Sure, some of you guys that follow the channel know there's now four bumpers just like mine out there. And I don't care if you guys want to copy this. It's a great design. It works great. If you guys need any information on how to build it, I will eventually have a tutorial. I'm just waiting on somebody to let me build theirs for them so I can get you guys a video on it. So if you guys want to come to Arizona and let me build one for you, you know, I still got to make a little money off of it, but I will definitely do it and I'll make a video too. We also did, when we did the back bumper, we did the bumper tie-ins. They were just the Amazon specials. Um, ties in behind here, brings all the way back, probably about a foot past stiffens all that up allows a good mounting point for your bumpers down there if you watch the video of us building that you'll see ben cutting putting those in if you guys ever put a bumper on your xj especially on the rear do not do it without those brackets because the first pull you do off-road like yanking on somebody or even towing a trailer you could rip that bumper right off and same goes for the front you want the bumper support brackets for the front on the winch because if you use the factory mounting locations 
you'll maybe get two or three winch pulls and most guys rip their bumper right off yeah so just keep in mind get those brackets they're cheap and they're a good sense of security so you don't rip your stuff off your rig so yeah when you start jerking on things you want <laughs> yeah. your bumper to stay put yeah because that kinetic rope's going to turn it into a big bungee cord yep all right one more thing under here this is a barnes transmission skid nice flat belly skid under here Quinn still doesn't have an SYE, but he has no vibe problems, and you've got a TK strop right now, right? Yes, it's a rusty TK strop. Yeah. So, I mean, this thing drives really nice down the road. 513 gears, it still pulls 70 just fine. It, it's so not screaming. One of the biggest things when I was trying to do this, nobody could ever tell me with 35s in this gearing, expect this at this RPM with the AX15 manual. And... <laughs> Ben pulled it up on their chart with an automatic. It should have been like 34, 3,500 RPM or something like that. Mm -hmm. But with the AX15 at 70 miles an hour, it turns around 25, 2,600 RPM. Not bad at all. With 35s and 515s. Yeah. So it cruises down the highway just fine. I can actually pull hills now without having to gear down several gears. It makes me regret not doing 513 in mine. <laughs> I, I was going to order the 488s and Ben's like, you know what? You got the manual transmission. Yeah. He's well, and either way, we were worried about the 513s being stress on his front ring and pinion for his 30. Yeah, but the 488's no different. So it's like, well, you might as well gain the gearing at that point. Yeah, and he told me, he's like, I should have, thinking I should have went 513, so I just went yeah. and clicked on it. We yeah, I'm on 37s, and I definitely wish I had 513s, especially after riding with Quince and Miss. This thing pulls hills way better than mine. Mine's still great, but could be better and this one of the reasons why i went to 513s is this will eventually end up on 35 or 37s mm -hmm. yeah i, I want to do the long arm and everything front and rear and that and i'll go up to probably a five and a half iron rock kit mm -hmm. and do 37s because the notch customs opens the world up well all right guys i hope you guys like this video this was just a quick update walk around of quince's jeep after the major build we did on it Leave a comment down below and we'll try to get your comments answered and answer any questions you guys have about Quince's Jeep or if we missed anything, just let us know. We'll try to fill you in. Um, let's... If you have any, if you go back in the videos and do the last walk around when I was on 31s, we answered a little bit more of the Jeep itself. This is more of just yeah. the upgrades we've done. Over the so if you guys want, I will drop that video in the description below. You guys can check out all the interior as well. It's basically a bone stock interior but it is super clean quince keeps this stuff pretty clean um and that'll just go show you guys what it looked like before all this stuff it definitely it dang near looks the same it just took a pill and grew <laughs> yeah. everything just kind of big. yeah yeah but it's definitely more capable now too for sure he's not diffing out on a bunch of rocks like he used to as well everything was just kind of more for reliability mm -hmm. just we knew we were pushing it with the 35 and that we were just running on borrowed time, especially when we went to 35s, we knew it wasn't gonna last long at all. Yeah, that Dana 35 was very lucky it didn't blow and it probably should have. But now he's got a reliable rear axle and a semi-reliable front axle right now. So yeah, we'll see how long that goes. There. But but anyways, guys, we hope you have a great evening and we will catch you on the next video very soon. We'll see you later.